What's up guys? Welcome back to the Dota Summit. This is the eighth one and we've got NA qualifiers. We've got Blue Pikachu going up against Leviathan from, I guess you can call it, the loser's bracket? I don't know. Either way, it's best of three loser is out. So yeah, I guess that sounds right enough. So guys, been a lot of talk about, uh, you know, the lower tier casters getting all these games. Well, you know what? I heard your concern. I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars getting the best casters here so we got a special guest grant how you doing welcome to the broadcast oh thanks dude it's going great you know fresh home from europe i just ate chipotle it's it's, it's all i could really ask for nene they they have queso now in chipotle i i, I actually I, I do not like their queso compared to like qdoba i, I don't know yeah but the downside then is that you got to go to qdoba but qdoba has bacon bits and that's a game changer oh, shit, really? for Cheetos. Okay, well, maybe maybe I'll check them out, but, uh, you know, probably can't ask for anyone more knowledgeable about the NA scene. Leviathan going up against Blue Pikachu. What's your initial take on, on these two teams? Because they had some pretty rough games uh, the other day. Yeah, I mean, Leviathan's probably the clear favorite. Because, Blue, I mean, Blue Pikachu, some of their players have been around for a while. Like, Ryo Boru was back during, uh, I don't know, 2013 was actually considered, like, one of the best mid players, like, alongside of Arteezy. But since then, he has taken quite the fall and then i mean alrin he he's been playing on a bunch of teams open qualifiers a lot in na pretty good player but just over i mean you know all the players on leviathan and blue pikachu is, is a team trying to make its name so it'll be interesting to see i mean leviathan just got crushed by dc earlier so we'll see if that has anything to do with how they play yeah, that's certainly some some stiff competition going up against dc but uh we are seeing a lot of tiny Nowadays, I think the first time I saw Tiny the new patch, it was four position, and it did literally nothing the entire game. But giving Tiny a little bit of farm seems like a pretty powerful hero. But uh, Blue Pikachu with the Slardar pick, a little bit of minus armor right off the bat, killing off Tiny through physical is still pretty hard, I think, even with this Slardar. Yeah, the thing is, Tiny's carry people like didn't really know how to play new Tiny. Everyone just said it was garbage, and then I think even just like five days ago during Dream League. People saw our Teasy play. You just played as a farmer who has like actual kill potential with tree thrown out. And the biggest thing is, I mean, he can farm ancients. And people don't realize farming neutrals isn't that good, but farming ancients is still one of the most profitable things you can do. He's just a, an extremely strong hero now. I mean, you, you could farm so quickly too. Like just tree hits, two, three hits, and a creep wave is dead like every single time or creep camp. Uh, I don't know exactly how long it'll take for ancients, but. Man, it, it is certainly a very dangerous thing, especially when you have someone like a Night Stalker on your team to apply that pressure. And Tiny, like, even though, as you said, like, is playing nowadays more so as a farmer, if you feel like going around and killing people, you definitely can't still do that with the Night Stalker. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. And I mean, I guess it's, it's, it's weird because there are two different ways to play, right? Because Chessy on Cole, I mean, NA seems like the only team that plays Tiny, but Chessy plays it the same way. Max stun toss, go around kills with his IO, while the other way is... You know, you, they actually go like one one four, which which is strange, right? I mean, that's how Sven's built now too, like one four one, just extreme farm or extreme kill potential. But you can do either. Uh, we do have a, a Broodmother first ban. Just gotta keep that one in mind. The bans are looking like a well, rather a lot of defensive power being taken out from Leviathan, including the Shadow Demon, who we've seen kind of pop up from time to time, but. Uh, yeah, they definitely do not want their targets to be saved, and uh, we'll, we'll see what else they're, they're going to look to ban out now. Blue Pikachu, Five though, grabbing the Slardar alongside that Rubik. Pretty nice 1-2 stun punch, most likely going to be their support duo already lined up. Uh, you know, it's a pretty powerful opening, though. Rubik with Slardar. I, I do feel like with Slardar, like, if you can get your Witch Doctor, yeah, that physical. Maybe I'm, like, overestimating it. There's a very high chance that that's the case, but I love that too so much. I don't know, the slar especially against Tiny, because the, the no armor all game is just insane. I mean, until he gets something like an Assault Curus or someone else gets a Solar Crest, but I don't know. The Silencer ban makes me think uh, a lot of different things. You you want to have either a heavy initiation like a, a Bat Rider or something like a Panda, which Leviathan saw and Ten banned out, actually. I guess do the uh, Beastmaster. Yeah, I'm actually really surprised that I, I really do like everyone talked about Bane being broke. I, I don't think Bane, I think Bane's strong, but like Beastmaster is definitely the, the hero of the patch. And I could see Leviathan. I know Monkeys Forever can play it. I'm not sure if Blue Pikachu can. Ten seconds mm, remaining. Yeah, it is. It's certainly a hero that, uh, though it's not really like Five a hard hero to play necessarily. Like if you are comfortable in the hero, if you can do the micro, 
then it just gets so much more impressive than just someone who can you know barely scrape by as the Beastmaster. I I'm with you. I feel like that that change of adding the uh, like the random neutral or whatever. I, I just saw that. I'm like. Why? Why does he need that power? I'm not really sure. It lets you kill things so very easily, especially when you're, again, looking to ride the physical train. That aura, as well as the fact that he does do quite a bit of damage, whether or not he's going for a Necro unit build. Well, it looks like uh, we're not going to see him just yet. Quap for Blue Pikachu, Warlock for Leviathan. Don't really see much Warlock nowadays. Yeah, it feels like only really Kyle from Complexity picks in. We're going to see it, I assume. I, I know Whitebeard. He used to play it all the time when he played back on Summer's Rift with, like, remaining. Demon and Brack. So it, it's going to be interesting. Also, BSJ still does the drafting and all that, but I wonder if some of the in-game calling might be done by Whitebeard now. I mean, he, he's captained a bunch of teams on his own. And BSJ, it's so hard captaining from a one position because you want to be focused on your farm, moving it, like, mostly just your farm, especially the way BSJ plays. Like, he doesn't really move around the map that much. So it'll be interesting to see if if they actually do give like control to Whitebeard to call on the map instead. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, is there does does Envy make the make the calls? I think he was like the only like one position guy who would make calls. I I, think, I like, believe Envy still does a little bit, but I. Uh, he might still do all the calling, honestly. And I think that BSJ gets a lot of like what he does from Envy. They they play very mm -hmm. similarly. Well, it's uh, like I said, certainly certainly a rarity, but uh, there's nothing wrong with it necessarily. If you, if you can hack it, of course. Blue Pikachu, they're going to take the Leviathan away from Leviathan. Feels bad, man, but uh, starting to build up some team fight. Still a little bit more physical uh, physical damage hungry here for Blue Pikachu, as this is going to give them quite a bit of, of team fight. But Leviathan, they have quite a few answers to this, quite a few good ones, namely in that Night Stalker. Remaining. Yeah, they're gonna have to. I mean, they're they're pretty much all in on team fight at this point. Like, they could still get like a Sven or something last pick, but all in all, they 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 want to push and they want to do it early. Quap scales super hard late game, obviously, and Ryoboros plays a very good Quap. I mean, that's what he was known for back then. But it, the the problem is, Blue T Pikachu's all in mm -hmm. on, on that team fight. While Tiny, he can team fight and he can farm. So I think Leviathan just has a, a better opening of picks. Well, Leviathan. With their two supports, most likely their one position core going to go ahead, grab an Aegis Prophet for that uh, for that off lane, and you know perhaps not going to take the team fight head on. It, for sure, the bans now from Blue Pikachu make a lot of sense, taking out that Silencer and the Puck. If their plan was to be to grab the Tide Hunter, you really don't want to deal with that. But for Leviathan, it seems like they're just going to try to avoid that as much as possible. Nature's Prophet really doesn't want to be caught up in a Ravage and a Sonic Wave and whatnot. So Split Push, perhaps the name of the game for Leviathan, got to be. Really aware with their vision now to avoid the uh, blue Pikachu Dyer team fight. Team yeah, I mean, H, if uh, it'll be interesting. I want us to know if Monkey's Forever, if he wants to go one on one against the Tide Hunter. Obviously, Tide Hunter actually super farms Dyer in that lane. Nature's Prop does as well, but mm -hmm. the thing is, it's definitely Monkey's Forever's best hero. And we've seen him play. I mean, when they beat EG, I believe, well, Star Ladder qualifiers, I think Nature's Prop was played in both those wins. And now they just end it with the TA. So uh, Leviathan's draft looks. Looks really good. As long as Warlock doesn't get his rock stolen, they have a really good draft. Blue Pikachu. Sven, Sven. Getting that Sven, Sven. like I said. Okay. Uh, it just feels like they're going to be doing a lot of, like, 4v5ing while Sven farms. Mm -hmm. And he's going to need, like, Mask of Madness, Treads, Blink, even Echo Saber. And, I mean, if you farm good, you can get it by 20, 25 minutes. But if you get ganked even once or twice, you, you will fall very far behind on Sven. Well, this is certainly one of the more premium heroes to have versus Nature's Prop. We see that like all the time. Nature's Prop first pick, immediate Sven response. If he's still in the pool, of course. So as far as the matchups are concerned, it does seem like this Sven is, in theory, in a pretty good spot. But again, as you said, it has to do with a lot of how much farm he can get. How good are the stuns from Blue Pikachu to actually set up for Sven's combos down the line? Because Leviathan are going to be hunting for that Sven. I mean, if, if he's the one hero you're protecting as Blue Pikachu... And Leviathan are not looking to team fight at all, then he's the one that is probably going to be in the most trouble. So, gotta have those wards up for Scourge. But, uh, yeah, what do you think about these two drafts in general? I'm a. It's kind of 50 50, right? Like the, the whole team fight versus avoid team fight theory. But who do you think can do that, their job a little bit more? 
I think Leviathan's just going to want to play a little more passively. Like, Rock isn't that great of initiation, but it's one of the best counter initiations in the game. Mm -hmm. And when Tidehunter's ults up, they're going to want to be playing really aggressively. But how I view Tidehunter, you have one or two bad ults, and the game pretty much just ends. Like, if you lose a team fight when you use Ravid, that hero's just not a hero anymore at that point. So uh, I think Leviathan's draft's a tad bit better. And the mid lane... TA should be able to, to dominate the, this Quap, just individual skill, and as long as he has a Sentry Ward, the, the, the Quap, if the Quap doesn't get a Sentry Ward middle, this TA is going to run all over him. Well, looks like the Radiant side going to just stake out this bottom lane and most likely just cross the river, try to grab both of those runes. A lot of pressure is going to be on that Tidehunter, it's just kind of the nature of the hero whenever you do pick up those really big ultimates or hell even like a terror blade type hero who has those big cooldowns like if you waste that uh, without getting an objective then you're, you're feeling a little bit bad about your game of course there's a little bit more leeway with someone like a terror blade the tide hunter you got to make that ravage count and along those lines it's always that question of your sven you know you have a ravage up on the team do you still farm or do you actually help out? They're going to actually circle kind of around monkeys forever. Auron's got a really good angle here. Of course, the hammer is available as well. Uh, looks like they just weren't able to get vision of the Nature's Prophet. Still, they're going to make their poke in. And as the Templar Assassin, I don't really know if you want to get involved in this, but is going to grab the rune. But at what cost? Is stunned up once by the crush. Goes meld. Now pits Auron. A lot of damage with a hammer storm onto three. And Scourge is going to bail Auron out. Meld picked up level one. In order to save herself, try to kill off the Slardar. It's going to hurt the TA quite a bit, but uh, Bounty Rune? Looks like that was a 2-1-3 uh, split, actually. Yeah, and it looked like it was such a good initiation with the, the lift into a stun, and then you just realize, like, TA has 6 armor. You, you, you actually do 0 damage turn that early, and... Well, there we go, they're just going on middle right now. This might be a kill. That was a dagger. There is also, though, a tower, and Villain is going to be just fine, most likely, is... You have to play things very cautiously. Probably something a Night Stalker does. Better than uh, a lot of those other four positions. Just sits there and is just very, very persistent. Very, very annoying. And doesn't seem like the cost is really there in the other lanes. Now they're going to go once again for Villain. This meld is doing his job and gets the kill. Little bit of minus armor. Sometimes all you need. Quap's still level one. Took Shadow Strike, so there is no blink escape. Yeah, I, lo I love how he kind of got the level one meld just to avoid that gank at the rune. Because even if your Slardar stunned or Sven stunned, it doesn't remove you from meld. And then it just ends up getting him a kill middle. See Whitebeard just taking a fight with this Tidehunter. Very annoying to be going up against Warlock as, as really any offlane hero. Uh, Tidehunter really wants to be uh, against these uh, lower range support heroes if that's all at all possible. But... Uh, is certainly going to be uh, able to get a decent amount of experience here. As annoying as the Warlock is, I don't really see Tidehunter dying to that Warlock until BSJ gets a couple more levels. Avalanche, man, that did a lot of damage. I think the Fatal Bonds are also on those creeps. Yeah, Fatal Bonds, one of those skills that just... It feels like it could be an ultimate on, like, any other hero. He wants and this kill so badly. And they're and also still balling in the bottom lane in the meantime. Once again, Crush is going to be there from Alrin. Scourge has a Mango to hammer monkeys, and he will eat it. Here comes the hammer. There should be another crush soon. They have this kill in the bag. Who's going to get it? It's Scourge. Sven getting these kills is a big deal. We already mentioned how important it is for him to keep farming in. If you're farming heroes, yeah, you're usually doing a pretty good job. Exactly. They're going to, I mean, they're going to want to roam as far while Sven farms. If he comes to fights too early and doesn't get kills, he'll just fall behind. Because you have two scaling cores, right? You have TA, well, three. TA, Nature's Prophet, and Tiny, who can all scale in the late game. Really, all you have is Sven. And, like, half of a co-op if he gets farmed, but he is getting beat pretty bad middle right now. And by pretty bad, I mean I mean he's getting put in the dumpster. Well, at least Villain has Blink now, so getting killed is going to be a little bit more difficult. But this is a, a serious CS discrepancy. Like, that 15 to 3 is already bad. Add the denies on top of that, plus the kill. Uh... Yeah, as you said, me mechanically, I, I would probably give this to, to Garter under any given scenario, and as a co-op especially, in this context especially, like, she kind of has to be at worst at parity, which is actually going to contribute in these team fights. Otherwise, like, an underleveled co-op, I'm, I'm not scared of an underleveled co-op. And the problem is, if you have a, a co-op versus TA, one of your supports needs to get a Sentry Ward down. We've already He's already dodged Shadow Strike twice middle by just melding. And if you're going to max Shadow Strike and just miss it every so often, it, it's just not worth it. Bottom, though. They'll hammer the Nature's Prophet one more time with a lift up. They have a crush afterwards. Monkey's in a lot of trouble. 
with the beatdown, they should be once again able to take down Nature's Prophet Nushim. Night Stalker, not exactly known to be a defensive support hero. This triple stun combo on Blue Pikachu is working out really well, but this is also all the supports tied up on this bottom lane. It kind of feels like they have to be doing about this well. Yeah, they they're, they're still down like almost a, a full K, but that's just mostly just the middle lane. But they're, they're fine as long as they're Sven's farming for now. They're gonna be happy with that. I mean, Tide Hunter, you you just want to get level six and have a successful. I mean, a first successful ravage into a tier one tower will always turn the game around. Villain takes some pretty big spill hits from the Templar Assassin. Not quite ready to go ham just yet, but uh, Lucium is nighttime number one and is poking around. But going for a Rubik with Sven backup with all those stuns. With very lacking backup. And they're going to fall back for right now. Still, I, I do feel like Villain is probably... I, I just got that feeling, man, that this Queen of Pain is going to take a spill. Lucium, though, is still kind of focused on, on this bottom lane. Just trying to give Monkeys Forever a little bit of extra space and... Now, CS-wise, Nature Prophet's still doing a pretty damn good job. That's just the power of these trans. Yeah, and I'm really... We haven't even seen Monkey's gank yet. Uh, I'm surprised, too, because Ryboru's... You, you actually expect to get a Quelling Blade on Tide when you're against a Fearon, so he could just TP top, and Ryboru's could not get away from it. And middle lane, I mean, a lot harder to gank. Obviously, it's a Quap with a Blink, but... I think they're fine. They, they just know, look, they're already up 2,000. Five minutes even down, two to one kills. They're, they're fine. They, they know they can just outfarm this team. That's, it doesn't sound like a lot because we've seen, you know, huge discrepancies in over the course of just games in general, but it's only five minutes in. You shouldn't be up more than 2k. That just it seems wrong. And it, as you said, like, it's two kills for Blue Pikachu. The entire discrepancy, or most of it at least, is in that CS department. They're going to try to once again go in for Monkeys Forever. This time there's a little bit of a slow here from Nushin to keep Allrun at bay. Save is also going to be a little bit slow incoming, but the Nature's Prophet is stuck in the trees, usually where a Nature's Prophet would want to be, but not this time. Monkeys Forever for the third time now going to drop. They're going to go for more. Stormhammer's there, but Night Stalker is a really tanky hero. And he's quick since it's darkness. Looks like they'll do quite a bit of damage, but unable to get in there with any Rubik spells. They're actually all on cooldown. Allrun going in pretty deep. Drops an OBS. Does see the Nature's Prophet return, but uh, that is going to cost Sven the rest of his mana pool, so they probably can't do much more here. Yep, and we, actually, we do see up top, BSJ is going for the, the very hard farm heavy build, max 3 onto the onto the tree grab. He's just been farming neutrals and stacks while he's out of the lane, and I mean, this guy's going to be jacked. He has an Aquila they can just push, but here comes Garter. On the hill, and there is a size spill hit! I, I had that feeling, and he has three points in side blades. Definitely for the range, very useful. But man, that was uh, yeah, that was a clutch kill from Garter on a lane that he's already dumpstering. He's doubling the Quap's net worth right now, and uh, Night Stalker gonna get his hands a little bit bloody as well. So top lane and mid lane now for Blue Pikachu, not looking too hot. They they it does feel like they they really have to just try to get on top of this TA. They definitely have enough stuns to chain stun her down and actually kill her off if they are actually able to leave this bottom lane for a little while. And look at this, they're stacking both ancient camps at the same time. They have a tiny anti-A, did Whitebeard get it? No, he failed. But they, they got the bottom one, so they have two sets of three stacks. I mean, that's just a ton of gold waiting to be farmed. I know I'm gonna miss those ancient stacks being cleared, but I really don't want to. I really want to see how fast it takes Tiny to do it. Uh, and we obviously know how fast TA can do it. She's got Quite a bit of damage, at least damage enough to do it, so, uh, yeah. I've heard stories, I I've seen it occasionally, but, uh, this Tiny, so far just pretty much playing the PvE is going to be, as you said, incredibly jacked yep. in the next couple That's minutes. one way for Blue Pikachu to turn this around, though. If they get a good gank with Tide Hunter, like, on the bottom lane, and finish him off, they, they God Strength with Sven and can clear out those Ancients, like, that that'd be perfect case scenario for him. They don't have vision of the Ancients just yet, so they don't know exactly how much Leviathan are working with. Of course, they can make that assumption. <laughs> We're up against Tiny and TA. Hey, there's probably Ancients, but... Uh, on oh, that one little just... dragon stayed. So they didn't get the stack bottom this time, but they did get it on top, so they're just trading <laughs> off over and over. That is so many stacks. Oh my goodness. Oh, Nushim. Oh, He's gonna break the smoke. Alrin... It's an arcane rune for his troubles. I guess that's kind of nice, maybe, but Guard is gonna get started. And if Garda takes both of these, I'm going to be a little bit disappointed. Uh, he's going to be pretty damn happy, though. Desolator probably locked up if he does clear out all of these Ancients on, on both sides. 
And for Blue Pikachu, this is the time to go. If he wasn't dying on top lane, I think he's dead to the Shadow Word in the trees. Looks like he took an avalanche, maybe not even a toss. Ryu is going to go down, and this is not good. They definitely need to start using these Ravages. It's been on cooldown, or available to them, for uh, at least a minute, minute and a half by now. Yeah, the problem is they don't even have another another tower hitter yet, right? So, like, what do they do? They just go five-man top or bottom? They'll push the tower so slowly, like, a, a Nature's Prophet could solo defend against it. It just feels like the, the, the draft feels so good for Leviathan. They have so many different things they can do, while Blue Pikachu is forced to... I mean, really, they can't do anything. And they're pushing that level six on the Warlock as well. If you, uh, you know, as great as that Ravage is, if you immediately get combo broken with the Chaotic Offering, could really uh, just nullify the Ravage almost entirely, or at least trade kind of one ultimate for one ultimate. But for sure, Blue Pikachu, you need the Ravage a lot more than Leviathan. You need that Golem, or the, the Golem Stun, rather. So things are st starting to get even worse. Nine minutes in, just four minutes after we would have 2k more advantage for Leviathan. 4k lead. And that is, of course, the, the Ancients being farmed up, and TA is going to take all of them, it seems. Feels bad. I want to see Tiny do a little bit of that, but Desolator is going to be up very soon for her, and Simple Pikachu are working with quite a few Ancient stacks of their own. A little bit slower coming out of the gate, obviously, with the Sven, but you know, they do have the ability to kind of power farm this guy, and off the bottom lane, Scourge is still doing a decent job in his farm. Yeah, the problem is they have to like commit to taking these ancients right now or else they'll just get middle pushed in and they'll lose control of their ancients and it looks like Sven wants to go for him now that, that's smart if you wait too long to take them the other team will just steal them from you once they win a fight Mask of Badness level 2 war cry maxed out cleave pretty easy clearing of these ancients and uh, take a look back at the TA that's not a desolator that's a blink dagger first item for garter Definitely uh, get some action with this item, and it's like she was going to scout the ancients, yeah, with those traps. A little bit late to get any intel, but you know what? I'm pretty sure for Leviathan, they're not feeling the pressure right now. In fact, they're going to jump in towards Villain, show off the Blink Dagger onto that Quap. Not perfect, but uh, Leviathan that <laughs> are under no pressure, even giving Whitebeard a little bit of uh, free lane time up towards top. I mean, the reason you go blink here, you have it so early. The, the Desolator, I mean, what's it really going to do against the Quap? You're just going to run at her, she'll blink away with the blink there. You can actually chase her down, be a lot more aggressive. Rybors should be fine unless they want to. Awesome. No, maybe not. Oh. Close. Whitebeard could have committed the rock, but they're, they're just, they're, like you said, they're saving it as a an anti-measure to the Ravage. Hmm. Ryu doesn't go all the way back. Does have a shrine here, so... Should be able to stick around this lane a little while longer, but the amount of burst now coming out of this tiny as he picks up his more uh, kind of nuking skills above his farming skills in the tree grab does make it dangerous even for a quote unquote tanky hero like like the Tide Hunter is going to show up in mid. Nusham though with the ward is going to see him. Uh, he's going to be surrounded. It is going to be daytime, so Nusham gets a lot lot weaker now. Yeah, this is stock rotation. It's uh, rotation. They're not really do much, but over bottom, they do catch the Nature's Prophet. Once again, diving past this tier 1 tower, which has already been taken down, killing off the Nature's Prophet. Doing what they gotta do keep, to keep this Sven relevant in the farm department. Yeah, the problem is, I mean, you're killing a Nature's Prophet who's going Meteor Hammer first, while the Tiny and TA are just free farming. Like, he, he's actually making so much space, unironically. Meteor Hammer, Nature's Prophet, seen it, uh... Once, I think? Seems it's once. garbage. There's no need to beat around the bush. That here, that, that <laughs> item in general, maybe it's just me, but I find that item so bad. Like, it's legitimately just bad. I'm pretty sure he might be memeing. He knows they're pretty far ahead. But, but maybe he actually thinks it's good and I'll have a word with him. I remember watching you on, on Dream League, kind of polling the pros. It seems like the consensus is more on the suck department. That's what but... it seems. But who knows, you know, Z Freak says it's good. Maybe it's NA thinks it's good and EU thinks it's bad. But Z Freak, Ravage now over in the mid lane, catches onto three. With a crush into the Night Stalker, Nusham is gonna fall. Avatos onto the Tide Hunter will make it a one for one trade. Scourge is in, but he has no God Strength on, so he's not doing all that much damage. He'll check out the Sonic Wave, only it's White Bear. It's not gonna do enough as BSJ is gonna toss a creep forward. Scourge taking a pretty big hit from the toss and will go down, giving a double to the Tiny. Looking for more as Monkey is gonna teleport forward. Can't quite catch the Slardar, is going to slither up to the north. But Leviathan end up taking a 1 for 3 exchange. They don't use the Chaotic Offering, but for Blue Pikachu, that was nowhere near good enough. You use a first Ravage like that, 
You need to be the one getting the three kills. Oh, here comes the hammer, by the way. Wow. wow, that was sick. That was the best meteor hammer I've seen all game. Uh, that's the problem, right? They didn't even have mana for Chaotic Offering, but Rivor's hit a, a pretty good ultimate, but the problem was, like you said, Sven didn't have God Strength. He wasn't, like, in, in time to get the double stun. He just got a single stun, and although they got one kill, I mean, three for one first Ravage does not feel good. And they're still just stacking Radiant's Ancients here. Now, now is like the worst part of playing Tidehunter. Use your Ravage, you do your job almost perfectly, and it doesn't work out the way you want it to, but now you just gotta wait, man. Just another minute where you can't really be a threat. You, you can't even fake being a threat. You just gotta sit back and kind of just let the enemies do whatever the hell they want, and it's, uh, it's a pretty big argument against Tidehunter. You're just so always reliant on this Ravage that uh, once it's down, you're kind of hopeless. Save is gonna steal the TP. Which is kind of nice if they actually were able to uh, keep it. <laughs> it's not going to be very useful right now. It is going to get blown up by the Night Stalker and TA. Now chasing into the tier 2s for the Slardar. What tier 2? I don't see a tier 2 there. Guard is going to get a dominating spree and they're going to group up in mid. No Ravage to fear for another 40. It's time to take a tier 2. Yeah, this, I mean, this game, we, we, we said it. Just the draft looks so good. Leviathan could play it so many different ways and they ended up playing it the let's dominate laning phase, but oh, barely gets out of there. Well, there is going to be a Ravage in time to at least threaten that tier 3 defense, so if, at least they don't have to worry about that just yet. They'll get probably two more Ravages uh, at least before Leviathan's momentum is really going to stop, but uh, well, they're actually chasing forward. White Beard is pretty screwed now. Hit with the Crush is hazed up as well. Can heal himself. Can maybe drop the ultimate, but that's not really going to be worth it. So they will lose Whitebeard on the retreat. Tower has been taken, though, and Monkey's Forever teleporting behind the Tier 1. Drops a Meteor Hammer on it, and then his Drake can TP out. Crush? Crush? Oh. Okay. Maybe it was on cooldown. It might, I actually didn't check either. that. That's rough, though. I mean, Sven could have stunned, too. They had vision of him, unfortunately. Now Monkey's Forever just gets out. Yeah, it's rough. When you're behind like this, or you're playing a, a team a little bit better than you, you just can't make mistakes. Because you can see it just feels so effortless for Leviathan right now. Play to their, and play to the enemy's cooldowns. Just rinse repeat forever. At this point, BSJ now, with the levels that he has with the Shadow Blade, can play kind of like the, uh, the Tiny of Old free rework, or just kill Roche. Uh, Roshan doesn't really stand a chance here since Garter also has this Desolator completed. So yeah, free life. Why not? There is a Ravage for Blue Pikachu. They have all of their tools necessary to actually contest this. Allrun, though, is going to be spotted on the incoming. Ryu is going to push forward. He has a Ravage Arm, but he doesn't really have any backup. Avatar's going to do a lot of damage. The Hood is going to protect him. He's going to charge in towards the Roshan, gets the Ravage off. Can they actually grab the Age here? They will. It's for the Slaughter. He immediately gets it popping out. The Chaotic Offering counter initiation onto three. Tosses there onto the Sven. Again, he doesn't have God Strength up, and he is going to fall. Slaughter stuck in the pit. Nice Aegis, bro. It's going to be a five for nil Leviathan. Clean house. They don't get the Aegis, but you know what? I'm pretty sure they're okay with it. Yeah, that was a, that was a four-man fatal bonds into tiny stun toss double tree hit. Actually, I mean those two could have probably two v five that fight. I think. What a combo! And yeah, wouldn't be surprised if we saw a good game. They might play it out, but this game is 17 minutes. You're losing a Rax. What a! I mean, they they didn't pressure BSJ. They didn't pressure Garter. They, they didn't have a Sentry Ward middle for Quap, and that's just that's a lane losing play when it's Quap versus TA with no Sentry. They, they killed off monkeys at least as much as they can, but we can still see this Nature's Prophet having a pretty large impact just with his natural kit. They'll sprout up Alrin, take him down with the melt hit. Ryu's pushing forward, but again, this is all a bluff. He doesn't have a Ravage. Scourge now finally going to get the God Strength off to hit Garter like three times. Maybe they'll be able to get this kill Oh, on the TA. They will before the sprout comes in, but now they have to worry about BSJ. Avalanche goes on to the tide. Can't kill him. The Kraken Shell is going to get him out to safety. BSJ getting chased down. But he'll kill for a craggy exterior right now. Not going to happen, though. He is going to go Invis. There's a Scream, and it does hit Invis. Villain going to try for it, but BSJ slipped to the south, so he's going to be just fine. Nushim getting chased out by the Sven. There's no more God Strength here. And Scourge, well, he does have some backup here from the Quap. They'll try to heal up the Night Stalker. Not going to happen. He'll be cloven in half by the Sven. Now Monkey's on the bottom lane in a little bit of trouble. Crush is here. He's going to sprout himself in with the, with the Slardar. And, of course, the Tide Hunter here. Fish v Nature's Prophet. 
Major Prophet is pretty fast, actually. Alvin needs a sprint or a crush. Blink into the trees. They do see him. Crush is in range. Can they actually hit him, though? They'll gush him. And yeah, Anchor Smash does have enough range. So they'll take down a couple more. But at this point, uh, well, they actually do save Rax. So that's pretty good for Blue Pikachu, all things considered. Yeah, got the kill on Garter, 800 gold, and this fan actually got both the kills that fight. He got like 1,500 from it, so he's happy. And then you get the kill on HS Rod, doesn't even get the tier 2 bottom, so it'll slow down their pushing a lot. And That's good, that's what Blue Pikachu needed. They just gained about 5k gold in that overall fight. But they gotta take some tier 1s, they, they've only taken bottom. They gotta pressure at least middle. They have to just do that exact same thing a couple more times. Get the kills on the Sven, try to get him towards... Uh, what I imagine is going to be a BKB uh, in this game. There's so much slow control, and even though he's pretty quick with a Mask Madness and Power Treads, now he has the Blink Dagger. One more item. We may be able to see some really bursty Sven play with the uh, combo of the Ravage. So, Blue Pikachu for sure not out of it yet. If they lost Rax, which they didn't, uh, then, then they would be in a lot of trouble. But still, they're, they're in fighting shape. If they can get a couple of team fights to kind of land their way, they have all the tools they need. Again, a Mega Farm, Sven, a Tidehunter who's working with all these survivability auras. We'll be losing their shrines since the tier 3 was taken. Leviathan still have to maintain their game plan. Try to avoid the team fights as much as possible. Try to get these pickoffs. Yeah, the problem is they just don't have any wards on. They are going to go in, though. Alrin is going to get silenced. Nushim's going to fly over the trees, so Scourge can't throw the hammer. Where is Sven? Just throw it over the trees, and maybe it'll work. They're going to clear the wards out. Now the turnaround here is saving the front lines. Does get the lift up onto the tiny, but... It's still gonna get just flattened. That looked like the telekinesis. Dropped to the tiny on top of the rubric and died from the wind. Yeah, it was so good by Nushan. By, by Sons and the Slaughter, he could just fly over the trees, which meant they didn't have vision. And, and that's the thing. Radiant finally gets some vision down. You see they placed that, that Tinker Ward bottom to see if Nature's Prowess ever split pushing. I like it. But they have such defensive wards bottom when they need to be a little more aggressive, like top lane, if they want to use that Ravage. And by having no vision up there against a Night Stalker, they're just never going to be able to go top lane. Okay, he's going to break in this right before he gets vision of the villain. Kind of a lucky break there from the co-op, because for sure with an avalanche toss and the backup coming in would have been a splatter on the floor. Alrin is going to be posting up behind monkeys forever. Absolutely no backup, though. I don't think this slaughter can really do much here. Looks like Leviathan just wanted a couple of tier 2s, but with another Ravage, Blue Pikachu are going to be willing to fight over this. Ryu's going to see... At least someone was here killing off the shrine. He's going to wander in into the shrine. This is going to be a pretty nice advantage here for Blue Pikachu if they actually find a good angle for a team fight. Scourge, though, easily going to go off onto the Night Stalker on the side. Garter is stuck in the trees. Can they get on top of him? Scream is going to be blocked by their fraction. Has another fraction. Ryu is still here. They're going to jump in with Scourge onto Garter. Ravage is there with a the Sonic Wave. That's a TA down. And Nushim is also on the run with the Haze on him. Not long for this world, although they don't actually give serious chase. BSJ in the back line is going to find the Quap, do a lot of damage, but not quite enough to get the kills. Nushim is going to fall. BSJ now pushing forward with the Invis, is going to get crushed by Alrin. Is there another hammer? No, there isn't. BSJ with the Assault Grass, my god, when did he get that? Is just a tank right now. Gets bashed for like zero damage, and Sven is doing about just as much. Monkey's Forever going to return to this fight now. The Chaotic Offering is going to crush the hell out of that Slardar. BSJ chucking a creep. Sprout is going to be cleared out by BSJ accidentally, but that's still a pretty darn good exchange for Blue Pikachu. But again, even despite these good fights, the gold lead for Leviathan is not changing. Yeah, Garter with a, an interesting choice to just bling into the trees there. He was trying to hide. I wonder if he, he misclicked trying to go over to the Ancients, and I mean, that just got him killed his own mistake. And a, a good chase to end up paying off the Night Star. But the problem was, like you said, Tiny Assault Kiros. You, you think he has zero armor, but now he has 20. It's pretty much like uh, all the strengths of old Tiny and all the strengths of new Tiny. So. BSJ has been entirely ignored, it seems, in all these fights. But for Blue Pikachu to ignore the Tiny and focus on the TA is a good decision. For sure, TA is a little bit easier of a kill, but at a certain point, you're going to have to kill off this Tiny. And that point is probably about now, when he has 18 armor, has the maxed out grow, so 40% status resistance uh, is pretty good in this game, just to kind of help make sure you're always doing that damage. But... Either way, this Tiny is an absolute monster, and I'm not convinced that Blue Pikachu can kill off BSJ without investing actually everything onto this guy. Yeah, once he gets hard, he's unkillable. I believe, I know I was testing with uh, another player that once you get the heart, Amongst Forever goes down. He's trying to snipe a chicken in base. 
But once you get a hard on Tiny, I believe you have 82% status resistance. Which, I mean, the best way to, to beat a Tiny right is kiting him around. Well, unfortunately, you just can't do that once he gets a heart. And now he swapped it up to Silver Edge, though, so... Say la vie. Is it possible to get 100 status resistance? There's, I don't... I mean, I'm sure there's a way, but it'd probably be... Probably like four, five hearts or something. They're gonna smoke up though, and they're they're gonna head top. This this could be the game-winning fight. Guardian Greaves and Ravage up on Tidehunter now though, so they do have to be careful. Garter, oh, Garter. don't breathe, TA. Don't move. And their backup is coming in from behind. The Rubik is lagging a little bit. And BSJ is smoked up right behind the enemy blue Pikachu side. He's going to turn the corner onto Villain. Silence goes off. Queen of Pain. She's going to take a lot of damage, but not going to go down just yet. The Ravage It's mostly going to connect only onto the Tiny. He's just turning around and battling everyone kind of by himself. As Garter now going to show up with the BKB. Aurin is going to join Villain. Toss onto the Slaughter. We'll get the kill there. A little bit of slow action onto the Tidehunter. He is extremely durable, but he has no backup. His friends are gone. Feels bad, man. He's going to die as well. And for Blue Pikachu, they tried to kill a Tiny, end up doing 800 damage. Yeah, their, their Sven TB'd bottom to stop the Nature's Prob from split pushing. The rest of the team just kept going, and without him, probably, probably a bad idea. Now the Doom push incoming. Still no racks taken from Leviathan just yet. Save's gonna get half his HP loss. Toss forward is gonna grab Meld. And with the hammer coming in, they're going to focus down to the Templar Assassin, blow her up before the Chaotic Offering come in. But now, the challenge here is to kill off BSJ afterwards. <laughs> Save is already down. He gets beaten down, villain, by Nushim. And Tiny doesn't even have a tree there. We can see how much damage he's able to do. Hammer drops onto the top lane and looks like from no racks is lost to maybe two in as many minutes. BSJ has to deal with Scourge right now. Avalanche is blocked by the BKB. He's taking about no damage here. He's going to toss back the Sven. Is really not with that much backup. Here's a little bit of slow from Whitebeard. DSJ still on the retreat, gets crushed. He is going to drop it. Looks like maybe goes invis. Please tell me they have detection. Oh, they don't. That's awkward. Nushim's gonna turn around and just give his life so that his tiny buddy may live. They try. They they certainly try. They're not able to kill off the tiny. End result is a racks and a half in advantage for Leviathan. And Tiny walks out of there. I I, I don't know if he, I don't know if he's killable. I don't know if that's possible. It feels like they're, they're blow. I mean, we saw him just blow everything middle on the TA, who's a little bit out of position. And then Tiny just comes on over. He's like, all right, you guys don't have any more abilities? Should be pretty simple here. And, and it was for him. I think they're just going to, I mean, they're going to have to defend the base one more time. More than likely, they're, they're just going to have to get perfect everything middle. Garter. Unfortunately, Rybor is still quite tanky, especially against the Desso. He does have a lot of... Reduction with that anchor smash isn't quite yet at that uh, damage block. Uh -oh. You know what? Tiny doesn't give a shit about any of that, so here comes the heavy hitter. Uh, you know, you, you can be tanky, but Tiny is Tiny, and he does have break. I think that was actually applied to Ryder there, so yeah, no crack and chill involved. Now into the Roche, it's the second one, so Cheese and Aegis pretty much in the back. Oh my god. That took like actually five seconds. That seems good. I'm actually surprised I didn't do it the other way around. But I guess because TA has a BKB, so it's, it's a lot easier for him to get cheese off. And now they're probably just going to end up pushing in all three lanes and then going for the Raxes, winning a team fight. TA going for... We went for Desolator, BKB. Now it looks like he's going for MKB. They're going to find the Quap though. Sheepstick is on Monkeys Forever. With the beatdown and the silence, Queen of Pain one toss away from dying. Villain down for 80 with no buyback. Uh, Tide is going to respawn here, but the push speed with the Meteor Hammer, I don't know if he's going to be here in time. Does a little bit of damage, I suppose. The racks on mid are going to be cleaned out. BSJ is hazed up. In the back, though, Guard is going to jump in kind of by himself. He is going to pop the BKB. has the cheese in his inventory as well. Just manhandling that Sven. 1v1, no problemo. Ravage goes off, hits onto 3. It's not bad, but there's really no follow-up here. They're going to try to go for BSJ, but he has an Aegis, so... He may go down here, though. The backup is coming in with Chaotic Offering. Is going to lose his first life. Guard looking to reinitiate. He is back at full HP. Scourge, though, with the God Strength. Just cleaving through everyone until BSJ is going to return. Doesn't have a tree, though, so it doesn't have enough range to attack. That Sven is going to back off to get a tree, but immediately gets Stormhammered on the return. Toss in onto Alrin. Looking for the slaughter. We'll get him. Garter still kicking onto the Sven. We'll get the kill there. They break the Titan, so there's no Kraken Shell. He's going to die as well. Well, uh, there it is. He's going to die as well. 
Triple kill for Garter. Buyback on the Sven. He is going to fall back. GG is called. And Leviathan pretty convincingly destroying DP here in game one. Yeah, no, it was so good. The Sven got his BKB up, but then he got somehow sprouted. Monkey Sparrow clicked on the ground, sprouted him, and then there was a, a full 16 second upheaval on the entirety of Radiant Team from Whitebeard. And they just, they take the game convincingly, like you said, it, it felt like a win from the draft. Like, they, they definitely won that drafting phase. Once you pick a Tidehunter fourth and you're forced to commit to getting a, a huge farmer like Sven, you're, you're, you're just in a really bad position unless you win all your lanes. And I believe they only won bottom. Yeah, I mean, getting it kind of nailed down in the draft is one thing. Having two of your lanes just get absolutely destroyed, even though they're like, yeah, unfavorable, it's like, they kind of need a little bit more than what they got. So Blue Pikachu seems like uh need to step up for the second game. But you know what? This is the best of three. So they do have one more shot here. Winner of this match faces up against VGJ Storm. That's going to be the next match of the day. But for right now, guys, I'm Mike Loris. I've been joined by Grant. Don't go anywhere. Game two coming soon.